WNZK has available a few good hours of airtime for a few good programs to serve their communities. Radio is better than ever in targeting an audience that listens to what you say. Learn more about this exciting radio broadcasting opportunity by calling WNZK Radio at 248-557-3500. Call now. We are WNZK, Dearborn Heights, Detroit. Your ethnic superstation at 690 days. 680 nights. Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern, and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Hussein. Our call on number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Hussein. Today's show is presented by the Ziad Brothers, and now here's your host, Ray Hanania. Hey, good morning, and everybody, and welcome to the Arab Daily News Radio Show. I am your host, Ray Hanania, and today is Friday. December 11, 2015, it's 8.03 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 7.03 in Chicago, where I am broadcasting from. We broadcast out of Detroit at 6.90 a.m. and Washington, D.C. on a.m. 700. And, of course, if you go to our website at thearabdailynews.com, you can get the link to the online broadcast so you can hear us um, online if you're not in Detroit or Washington and, of course, Layla told me that uh, in the few, next few weeks, I think, she's going to be expanding uh, all over the country. Some really big, uh, neat things that she's going to be doing. So we're looking forward to that and uh, having some fun. You can call us this morning, although i got two guests, but we may take some calls at 248-557-3300. Um, and remember, you can get more information by visiting the ArabDailyNews.com. And uh, also by uh, checking our podcast, because after the show, we will podcast these interviews on iTunes, and you can download them to your iPods and cells and iPhones and all your gadgets. Later at the 30-minute hour, we're going to talk with Eileen Fleming, the writer and blogger who has published so many exclusives and insights into the Israeli persecution of Christian dissident Mordecai Benunu, who exposed Israel's lies and its nuclear weapons program, and its weapons of mass destruction. Uh, Vununu had converted to Christianity, and he was immediately jailed um, by the Israelis after he exposed the Israeli lie that Israel does manufacture nuclear bombs, 250 of them they have. And, and that was years ago, I think in the 1980s, and he's been hounded and persecuted ever since. But now we're going to talk to one of our friends, stand-up comedian Ramsey Swayze, about his career and his unique themed performances, I Never Repeat a Joke. Ramsey also writes for the San Diego Reader, and we're glad to have him back on our radio show this morning. It has to be a tough challenge for you, Ramsey, to do so many shows as you do and never repeat a joke. I've never seen a comedian do that. How tough is it? Um, I... I actually, um, I did it after 83 episodes. I, I was born in 1983, so um, I kind of feel like I, um, I deserve a break. Um, right. So, um, so you've been, also, you've been born in 1983, really, and have you been a comedian yeah. all your life? Did you know you were going to be a comedian? Um, well... I think uh, it's a test of strength, and I've always wanted, um, I've always enjoyed uh, tests of strength. Okay. But it's a really difficult t uh, time right now, um, because I, because I, um, when I go on stage, um, if I say anything that, you know, I'm identified as 
<laughs> you know, this has happened since I started in 2010 as a, as a comedian. You know, that there's people yelled, you know, um, people yell racist things at me. Really? And, um, and, and because oh, yeah, you're Arab? Yeah, God, wow. all the time. Wow. Um, but that's not the only hurdle. The second, the, that's only one hurdle that I, I would be able to, you know, hurdle or whatever, but, or jump or whatever, but the, the second hurdle is that every time I do a show, I, I announce that, you know, I never repeat a joke, and people are interested, but they don't understand. And then they need an explanation, and so when people see it, they're like, oh, he's bragging. And so it's a double-edged sword for me because people, when they see the video, they think I'm bragging, but people, when they see an audience, they want an explanation because it's their first time. They're like, well, what does that mean, you know? I mean, it seems pretty simple. I Listen, you need me to be a bodyguard to beat the crap out of people over there at some of your shows because I'll tell you what. Uh, audiences do come in three groups. They're either mean and they're hecklers, or they just don't understand what you're saying. But the majority of people, and that's who I'm sure you perform for, I think they get your humor, don't they? I, I mean, it's simple to understand. You never repeat a joke. That's a phenomenal goal, you know, for any comedian. And, you know, a lot of comedians, um, they don't, I mean, like me, I, I don't do com comedy professionally, but I do repeat jokes. And I believe that, you know, most of the audience hasn't heard it, so it's okay to do it. And I try to add new material. But do you actually 100% start over every time you get on stage? Well, the reason, yeah. Well, wow. But the That's thing, amazing. Yeah, but, yeah, it was like, I, it was like again, it was a test of strength. I wanted to see what would happen if somebody would not repeat jokes right now. Um, because of, you know, my racial identity, it's now, it's not, it's kind of frowned upon because, right. um, somebody that's putting that themselves under that much pressure, um, you know, and when I go on stage, you know, it's not the prettiest thing and, you know, right now people are very myopic. Right. Um, and so, I, and I don't really look at it as humor, I was just looking at it as things that I stand up in and, and right now I really don't feel, um... I really don't think it's right how Facebook is, has every, has kind of um, swamped every corner of our lives. Um, and, and so I was looking at it, yeah, and so, yeah, because it's like a safety net from like YouTube, and YouTube is really difficult to master. Uh, YouTube, every 30 days as a, as a company on YouTube is equivalent to 30 years as a film studio. So it's, so people think, you know, oh, I could just put a YouTube video and make some money, and, you know, you have to make... And just flip your camera right at the right time and get like your cat licking your dog or something, and it's 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 going to cause a lot of car accidents and it's, it's you know YouTube is really dangerous, uh, Facebook. Um, so I was trying to, to to mix the two, and so I would go on stage and say a lot of funny things and say it in a funny way, but a lot of things had like truth to them, and so I would call myself like a truth warrior. And uh, but right now I don't want to, and that's why you know. After 9-11, when I did my show on 9-11, um, and then I did the article, I am, or God is dog, that God is dog, or dog is God, um, you know, because, you know, Arabs don't like that shit, you know? No, I know, and you got to be careful about your language, okay? I, oh, <laughs> on radio, that's yeah. okay. Listen, I, you are correct that the Arab community is a tough uh, community to do comedy for. Uh, they're very tough. They're very critical. Um, no matter what you do, they're not going to be happy because they're angry. You know, our community is an angry community. They're beat up by everybody. You're Christian Jordanian. I'm Christian Palestinian. But a lot of people out there, Americans, look at us and say, oh, we're Muslims, and they hate us for something that we're not. And that's not to say that their hatred is right at, at all, but they hate us because of that. And so you're up against that. You can't even explain to the haters why their hatred is wrong because it's wrong. They don't understand it. And, yeah, that, uh, and then our community, we're under such, you know, siege, everybody, from every corner, that a guy like you and other comedians, we try to, you know, show the true character of Arabs for smart people. You know, Ramsey, you're a smart kid. Uh, humor takes a lot of talent. It's not easy to make people laugh. 
And most Arabs, at least, they recognize humor is great, but they're touchy. You, you make some joke, and they, fo they fixate on that 1%, and they ignore the 99% you know, percent of good. So, yeah, I know how tough your life can be trying to do comedy in the Arab community. It's tough just being an Arab in this country, right? No, no, it's not tough. I mean, I'm living a really good life. You know, I'm loving San Diego. Um, but you, you don't know, think that the race, you know, like you say you get, you know, racist, you know, or, you know, pushback yeah, from the public. Is that, yeah. that's not nice, is it? I mean, is that good? No, that's not well, comfortable. Yeah. No, but that that's nothing. That's something I'll never be able. You know, as, as you know, because it's been so. Yeah. You you've seen it for so long. It's you, you can't explain it to people. But right. People are people are intelligent enough. People are really they're, they're very in tune. Like I said, they're always on Facebook. They're very in tune. Um, but yeah, it's tough because you know I got to roll with the punches and the Arab community. They they accepted me. Um, I relocated here. And I want to show that my community who accepted me in Chicago and, you know, <clears throat> did so much for me and supported me that, you know, my feet are grounded here. And I did 10 shows at 10 different venues um, here. Um, and I'm still rolling with the punches. But, and I'm not complaining. Again, uh, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm living the dream. I really am. Right. Um, but, you know, and, it could be better. And, by the way, for listeners, uh, just to remind them, we're talking with Ramsey Swayze. He's a great comedian. I, I've heard him. He's very funny. He's a good writer, too. Uh, controversial sometimes, <laughs> but a good writer. And he writes for, what, the San Diego Reader. And uh, he's based in uh, the West Coast right now. He was from Chicago. Sway family is a huge uh, family here in uh, the United States, mostly from Jordan, I think. I don't know. Are there any other Swayces from any other country? You got any uh, Saudi Arabian Swayces? Um, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I don't know um, the geography of the Middle East, and I always say um, I always say stupid things about because you know people, the geography of the Middle East is very people are very touchy about it, and if you say the wrong thing about the wrong area or region, right. like I just lost a really good friend of mine, Mo Shema, in Chicago. Right. Because I said because I said the wrong thing, you know, and um, good, but it, it it but people should be smart enough. Listen. I mean, you're a complicated person to, un to understand, Ramsey. I, I get that. <laughs> that's okay. You know, that's all right. But people should be smart and figure you out. And if, you know, when I, people say stuff I don't like, I try to listen and give them the benefit of the doubt because I assume 80% of what people say is driven by their environment and they really don't want to be mean. And then yeah, only 20% of the people out there really are haters. You know, there's a small group of haters. So if somebody doesn't yeah. like you, it's because, one, they don't understand you, or, two, they just hate you anyway, and they were never your friend. So, well, but, but, but under your tutelage, you know, as I worked for you on, under your wing for 14 months, and I learned so much uh, under your, you know, your tutelage, you're always there. You know, as I, when I sent you that, that card on Thanksgiving, um, and I, you know, and I learned that, um, you know, it's been five years, and I've, I've learned to be very patient. And, again, people are very um, smart. And, and, and yeah, there's the beginning, the beginning to understand, and I actually just uh, wrote an expose on Donald Trump. Uh, it's called I Am Donald Trump, but it has a hashtag. <laughs> um, right. So, so I'm, I'm a really good, uh, you said I'm, I'm a really good comedian and a good writer, but I think I'm, I'm a better writer. Um, than I am a comedian. And I think writing, honestly, is, and I've tried to explain this to the Arab community, writing is a foundation of success in this community. Communications. Uh, comedy is just another form of communications, and Arabs don't get it. They don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to do public relations. They don't, we're, that's why we have so few Arabs in the media, so few Arabs in entertainment, you know, we think, oh, we want to be doctors and lawyers and engineers, and that's going to be a great thing, because back home, that's the only thing they'll accept. Anybody like you and I would have been put in jail a long time ago. We're talking with Ramsey Swayze. Ramsey, we've got to take a quick break here for our advertisers, okay? And then I want you to right. hang on, and when, right. we'll come back, when we come back, we're going to continue our discussion with my right. guest, comedian Ramsey Swayze. 
He is a writer at the San Diego Reader and a great comedian. He's been doing comedy for more than five years. He and I have known each other since he started. I've known his family yeah. in a long time. We have our ups and downs, you know, the way everybody <laughs> does. But Ramsey is a great, he's laughing about it. <laughs> yeah, Ramsey is a good guy, and I'm glad that he's on our radio show. We're going to take a break here at the 15-minute uh, mark on uh, the Arab Daily News radio show. I'm Ray Anania. It is December 11th, and uh, when we come back, we'll continue our discussion with Ramsey Swayze, the stand-up comedian uh, from Chicago, now in California, when we get back right after these messages. Ziad Brand, quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Jumana K. Roos. You've seen her images on giant billboards across the metro. Jumana K. Roos. You've seen her images on buses across the city. Now get to know Jumana K. Roos. It's sad, but it seems like we live in an age where most lawyers are focused on the bottom line, the money. And a lot of people have stopped wanting to truly advocate. I never forget this case. This woman chose me as a lawyer of last resort. She was hit by a semi truck. I was able to recover about $480,000. Not every lawyer is an advocate, but every lawyer should be an advocate. Let Jumana K. Roos protect your rights. Call the law offices of Jumana K. Roos at 1-866-YOUR-RIGHTS, extension 100, or visit yourrights.com. Life for Relief and Development is a nonprofit charity that has been providing humanitarian aid and development to people and communities regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background for over 22 years. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life rushes to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Life also has development projects to provide medical relief, water purification, educational programs, relief for orphans, and much more. Your help and support can greatly improve these efforts. All donations are tax deductible. For more information, please visit our website at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's lifeusa.org, 248-424-7493. Four two four seven four nine three. And welcome back to the Arab Daily News Radio Show. I'm Ray Hanania. Today is Friday, December 11th, and uh, we're on the line with stand-up comedian Ramsey Swayze, who's uh, calling us from California. I'm in Chicago, and we're broadcasting in Detroit on 690 AM radio live and Washington, D.C. on 7 100 AM radio and also live online and uh, Layla Hosseini who runs the uh, Good Morning Michigan program Monday through Friday in this time slot. I'm only here the second Friday of every every month now, uh, but she's on every morning Monday through Friday and uh, her network is expanding so we congratulate Layla for all the work and she got some big award from some uh, organization. I mean, she's getting awards all the time anyway. Whatever. No, Bill is a good person. So, uh, Ramsey, let's take a quick phone call from one of our listeners, Jerry. Jerry's online, and uh, he wants to ask you a question. Go ahead, Jerry. Good morning, Mr. Ray Hanania, and thank you for taking my call, sir. How are you? You ever hear of Ramsey Swayze? Believe me, this is the first time, and I was surprised that we have some uh, Arab comedians. He's good. He's good. He's kind of like an Arab dictator, though. You know, one day he's happy to <laughs> pat me on top of the head, like, you know, and the next thing you know, he's beating the heck out of you, right? Well, he, he, he is, uh, if you say he is an Arab dictator comedian, but he's developing to democracy Arab. Yes, he is. Actually, Mr. Ramsey Mr. is a good guy. Mr. Ray Hanania, Go ahead. I wanna... Wait, go ahead. Yeah, I want to say to Mr. Ramsey Swayze, good morning yeah. to you. This is Jerry Habba. How are you, sir? Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Very Ramsey, good. Thank you. 
Mr. Ramsey, uh, Mr. Ray earlier mentioned about your last name, if there's any uh, uh, other sways in Saudi Arabia or Middle East. <laughs> but I do connect your name with the late actor Patrick Swayze. Is any relationship uh -huh. between you? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I didn't think of that. Patrick Swayze, Patrick Swayze one of those Arabs who was embarrassed about his last name. <laughs> it from Sway. Yeah, you, uh, and do you wow, remember uh, his movie, The Dirt? Dancing, what a beautiful movie! <laughs> That's an Arab movie. Look yeah. at that conspiracy, right, Ramsey. Well, it's our fault yeah. that they came up with Dirty Dancing. They blame us. Yeah, Mr. Ramsey. Yeah. my yeah. Uh, 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 address uh, to you, uh, my conversation. Are we the uh, Arab people or the Middle Eastern people in Canada, America, all over? Are we ready uh, to accept? the uh, comedy in the theater. As Ray uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the Arab people, Middle Eastern, they're still very sensitive to a certain issue. But do you remember in Syria, the great actor, uh, what's his name, he used to criticize uh, the regime of late President Hafiz al-Assad, Mm -hmm. And uh, the half of the asset, uh, the president that time, he said to his uh, intelligent agents, leave him alone. Let him talk. He is speaking his heart on behalf of the Syrian or Middle Eastern people. This is one part of my question. Second thing, uh, Mr. Ramsey, you mentioned Donald Trump. If you allow me, uh, Ray, if you allow me, you got to do it fast, Jerry. Yeah, Mr. Donald Trump, the the Republican candidate for president, he mentioned two three days ago uh, some uh, 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 criticism about uh, banning uh, Muslim from entering the United States. I just want to take your review about this, but okay. I came very hard on Donald Trump uh, yesterday on Middle Eastern radio station yeah, so here in I. Detroit. And I said, yeah, so not I. every Muslim is a terrorist, not every terrorist is I a know, Muslim. That's what I, that's and what for I was me, saying, Terry. And for me as a Christian from Iraq, I stand strongly support my brother, my sister, Muslim, because if they attack today Muslim, they will attack tomorrow the Christian, the Jewish, you know, every Jerry, else. look up hashtag I am Donald Trump, and, and you'll, you'll see it. It has like 30,000, you know, shares, man. It's, it's exactly what you're saying. You, 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 it's, you it's, know, it's Mr. Above, if, it's above Mr. And beyond Mr. Ramsey, it, I God. if you allow me to say to, to you, this is only a thunderstorm. The Republican candidate, Mr. Donald Trump, he just tried well, to... Let's see, I understand, man. I swear yeah. to God. Yeah, no, no, we get it. Uh, you know, uh, Jerry, we both, Ramsey and I, get it. You know, uh, what's interesting about Donald Trump is he's just the tip of the iceberg. It's you know, and uh, because a lot of those right-wing nut jobs... is a propaganda. They, they, yeah, they're they're like they've been saying some of the same stuff. Listen, Jerry, I gotta let you go, okay? Thank because you, we God only bless got a few you. Here. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey, and good luck to you, sir. Thank you, hey. Jerry. Have a nice weekend. All right, you too. Go ahead, Ramsey. What were you gonna <laughs> say? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I felt like I was being rude. I, I didn't mean. No, to be you rude weren't at being all. rude. You're doing good. I, Believe I, me, I I'll didn't. tell you if you're being rude. How could you do that? <laughs> Did you yell that a lot when you were a kid? Um, in a good way, I guess. Really? All right, you're not a Scientologist, I, are you? If that's possible. <laughs> no. You haven't joined Scientology. You know, if you do that, you know, you could be like, wow, the king. You could be like the, you know, the, uh, the new uh, messiah. So they're looking well, for somebody, and I, I think it's time that an Arab took over that organization. Um, the Messiah, the Messiah of who? Yeah, they're like from California, aren't they? The, all the celebrities. All the Scientology. Yeah. Uh, I I was asked to uh, I, I was asked to sign a contract with Blooming Twig, but I don't I haven't written a, a book on Scientology. They for a billion years they make you sign. They, they wanted they want the articles that I wrote for you actually as a eighty three. Ah. Or I don't know. I think I wrote eighty three articles for you as well, as well as my. I, I, I think you wrote fourteen. 83, that's a lot, Ramsey. 
I don't know if you wrote 83. But, hey, well, I made Tom, a video us, about it, too. Tell, do you have a website, Ramsey, where people can go to get information if they want to follow up? Because I, I hope listeners out there in Detroit and uh, Washington, if you need a comedian, somebody who's different, somebody who's going to offer you a different kind of show, Ramsey, I think, is a good guy. And, and how would they get a hold of you? Where do they find you online and on the Internet? It's a comedy style. And so usually when I perform, other people will, will I'll ask other people if they have jokes. And so it makes everything much easier. <laughs> because everybody has jokes. Right. And so it's a, yeah, it's a style. Um, it's a movie that I, I wrote. There's a, there's a trailer, actually, um, that I have. It's not the best. Um, I'm sure it's good, though. Don't, don't undermine yourself. Don't ever, you yeah. know. That, that's the first thing you learn in Scientology. And I'm not a Scientologist, but I've just I've been reading all the stuff they've been writing, beating it up. Yeah, great stuff, great books. It's an unbelievable thing. But uh, where on the Internet are you? What's your website? What, 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 where should they go to follow you, to get more information about you? Where, where do you want them to go? Well, it's the same website. What, NeverRepeatedJoke.com and RamseySoyce.com are, are the same website. Okay. Um, you see all 83 episodes at the 53 Comedy Club, and, you know, you, you can read articles that we were talking about. Um, and I actually might be moving back to Chicago um, to live and, and to stay around my grandparents because um, I got a uh, contract, I got a full, I got a, a ride to go to the Illinois Center of Broadcasting. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, it was a $9,500 um, grant. So, um, yeah, I want to get into radio like you. Good. I, listen, radio is a great way to do it, and uh, I did it for a lot of years. I was at WLS for like 12 years. Uh, yeah, I have a lot now, to say. Pardon me? I said, yeah, I, nothing. I was just saying I have a lot to say. Yeah, and you know what? Communications is the way to get the word out. Ramsey, I want to, listen, We I got to let you go because we're at the bottom of the hour. But I want to say I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I want everybody out there, if you get a chance, please go to RamseySwayce.com. That's one S, correct? Or yeah. NeverRepeatAJoke.com. That's NeverRepeatAJoke.com. Connect with them. You can find them on Facebook also. Um, hook up with them. Like them. Friend them. Uh, well, wouldn't marry him too. I don't know. He, he gets four wives like the rest of us, don't you? You, you got all four slots open, don't you? Yeah, I do. I'll, I'll all right. live up to that. And when you go to neverrepeatedjoke.com, there's a survey uh, about the website. So if you have anything to say, you know, welcome. You know. And listen, I can promise you, Ramsey never loses his cool. So if you're honest with him and criticize him, he's just going to hug you and love you, right, Ramsey? Yes, I, 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 everything in the name of knowledge. All right, Ramsey, listen, thank you for coming on the radio show this morning. Really, it's nice talking to you, and I wish you a lot of luck. Okay, we'll talk again. Thanks for everything over the years. I owe you. All right, no problem. <laughs> NeverRepeatedJoke.com is the website, and our guest, Ramsey Swayze. Um, we're, when we come back, we get, we got another de guest coming on, uh, Eileen uh, Fleming, who is a writer. She's going to join us in a, in a little bit, but we're going to take another break. When we come back, we'll uh, have Eileen join us and talk about her writings um, and her life. And uh, how does a, a crazy American-looking, good-looking woman end up being a champion for the rights of Arabs and Palestinians? on the internet. We're going to ask Eileen Fleming that. She's when beautiful. we come back right after these messages, everybody. Ziad Brand. Quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Abood at 734-744-9796. 
Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Najee Aboud now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design, new location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Abood, 734-744-9796. From their first words to first grade, Dreamy Children's Center will help get your child on the right track. The highly qualified staff works closely with parents to provide an experience that goes beyond early education. We can help nurture important personality traits with the use of educational programs ranging from preschooling for infants to Montessori-approved programs and bilingual curriculums for young children. All meals can be provided and we can arrange for after-school pickup. Dreamy Children's Center in Dearborn Heights on Warren in Westland on Ann Arbor Trail and in Troy on DeQuinder. And welcome back to the Arab Daily News Radio Show. I'm Ray Hanania. It is Friday, December 11th, and right now it's about 8.31 on the East Coast, EST, Eastern Standard Time, 7.31. In Chicago, we're in broadcasting, and uh, we're live on 6.90 a.m. in Greater Detroit, WNZK, and also AM 700 Radio in Washington, D.C. And if you go to our website, thearabdailynews.com, you can get information on the radio show and if you're not in Detroit or Washington, D.C., you can listen to us online. Um, and if you can't listen to us, uh, you're busy doing things like sleeping. Some people might be sleeping. Uh, this time you can always uh, connect to our podcast on iTunes, and you can get that off of our website again at thearabdailynews.com. One of the people that I've known for a while and uh, who writes at the Arab Daily News, great writer, is a friend of mine, Eileen Fleming. And Eileen Fleming is a writer and a blogger. She's published so many exclusive stories about the Middle East. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't get how this beautiful non-Arab woman spends most of her time writing about Arabs. Eileen, what's that all about? Um, it's about the thing, Ray. Uh, before that day, we call 9-11. And before I even get there, I have to say how excited I was to hear Ramsey. Uh, I didn't realize how young he was. I've got a Ramsey's daughter a year older than he is. Um, and before that day, we call 9-11, I was your typical comfortably numb American. Uh, I didn't think anything beyond my uh, comfort zone, my family, my little community. And I had already embarked upon a um, formation program for spiritual directors through the Episcopal and Methodist Diocese in Orlando. So I was into always a writer, but I was learning now about the saints and different things were going on in my life, dreams, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That day we call 9-11 happens, and so many things came uh, to my realization. Number one was the media was not asking my questions. And as a child, I wanted to be a reporter, and I think that was the catalyst, the spark that began my investigating, researching. But because I am a lover of the nonviolent Jesus who said it is the peacemakers who are the children of God, I was looking for something positive, a positive response with Jesus, how Jesus would respond to, to this madness. This so you don't, you don't believe... You, you don't accept Chrislamicism, which is the Christian fanaticism. Radical Chrislamic extremism is what I call it. I you know, say you don't, you don't accept that. I mean, that it's all right. religions, and as Martin Luther King Jr. said, uh, extremism runs. You know, it, this is what uh, moves the world. So, what are we going to be extremists for? Right. You know, and I pick to be an extremist for what Jesus would be an extremist for: the truth, right. um, compassion, you know, forgiveness, and 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 doing, understanding that God is within all. Everyone doesn't matter what they think in their head. God's already but, within them for by virtue that they are alive. But so, Donald Trump I, says he loves Jesus, too. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. I, I mean, Jesus, Jesus is for everyone. He does, the, the Christians don't own Jesus. He's got his arms open for everyone. And um, so I looked, and, and I met a man who, a 1948 Palestinian Muslim refugee, Dr. Khalad Diab, he was living in Orlando, 
he has since died, but um, at that time he was in Orlando, and he founded the Olive Tree Foundation for Peace as a positive response to the madness uh, that that we got from 9/11, pre and you know post. And we were focused on raising awareness about Israel's wall, and that is an apartheid wall we know. It's funded by USA tax. Payers. And a lot of it, you know, Haaretz has done a great job uh, yeah. uh, about the settlements, how much yeah. money, uh, American money is over there, and where it's going, it's uh, such, I, I've, got to, I've got to follow up and do a story on that, I'm getting ahead of myself, but Dr. Diab, uh, although he was a Muslim, he was the best Christian I've ever known, because he did what Jesus said, you must love, you must forgive, you must bless your enemies, so before the Olive Tree Foundation for Peace uh, disbanded, uh, we had raised a lot of awareness and funds in America to uh, purchase, uh, four, it ended up being 40,000 three-year-old uh, fruit-bearing, mostly olive trees, <laughs> saplings that were planted on both sides of the walls. Um, wow. And this was um, the, literally the olive branch. Extending wow, it. Phenomenal. Yeah. You know, so anyway, when I went over there, I was just a writer. I was always a writer, and I was writing Dr. Diab's story, and that's my first book. is based on his memories, his memoirs, and I begin to tell my spiritual uh, journey um, in that book, and it continues. All my books, they're all a God thing, and I was not a reporter until June of 2005. I had serendipitously, I say it was a God instance, how I even met Mordecai Venunu, and we began a series of interviews, and his life preceding, you know, everything is very interesting, his childhood, his, his spiritual right. journey, all of that is very interesting, but it was when he said, did you know that uh, President Kennedy tried to get um, Israel to open up the Demona and uh, Kennedy would send letters, and uh, then Gurion would say, oh, it's only for peace, you know, it's only for peace. When Johnson became president, he would send two senators over to Israel, uh, the Demona, but before they got there, the big joke was they, the Israelis would seal up all the stairwells and the doorways, so the senators yeah, they had a great, um, um, you know, view of sure. the first floor, but never knew what was going on seven stories underground, which let, was already let me, let me just explain to, Let me just explain to listeners a little bit about what you're talking about. The yeah. Bona is the nuclear reactor uh, area in Israel, in the Negev, that Israel claims doesn't really exist, or at yeah. least for most of the, Israel's existence, they've insisted that it doesn't exist and they don't build weapons of mass destructions and nuclear bombs. And uh, so many American politicians, uh, like you point out, LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, um, kind of, you know, went along with it. They, don't, they didn't want to challenge Israel. They knew Israel was lying, you know, but they didn't want to embarrass Israel. Meanwhile, they were cracking down on every other country that had nuclear weapons and warning about nuclear proliferation and nuclear holocaust. Um, and how we got to ban the bomb, but not Israel. And then you meet the guy who blew the whistle on it, Mordecai Venunu. Yeah. And uh, you met him in 2005, right? Right. And, and, and he's and Israel under jailed him. Didn't he work at the Demona Nuclear Center? Um, he has not set foot in the Demona Center since 1985. And um, we'll talk about uh, what he did. And he was just a mid-level technician. He, well, let me start from the beginning. He was born in 1954. The Zionists come to uh, Marrakesh, Morocco, convince his uh, Orthodox uh, Zionist father to settle in um, Israel. And they have family in Nazareth. But when they get to Israel, they're assigned uh, to Beersheba, which is another one of the 500 ethnically cleansed Palestinian vi villages that Israel wiped off the map. Right. And Venuna said, you know, he was already disconnected from Judaism and God and uh, society. You know, he was nine years old. He'd walk around and he'd see mosques, but he never saw a Palestinian. Not until, and, and then, you know, he was in the uh, Israeli occupying forces in Bethlehem and uh, 
Uh, he did not encounter a Palestinian as a human person, uh, an equal person, until he went to the university. And that's when he was also took a job on the night shift at the Demona just to pay pay his rent. He didn't really even said he didn't really want the job. The sign outside said it was a textile plant. Everybody signed a secrecy agreement that they're not going to talk about what they do. It's very compartmentalized. Um, and I'm not sure how many years he was there before he started putting two and two together, but I think he was there a total of nine years. And when he realizes they are starting to work on thermonuclear technology, the new new sneaks in a camera and film on separate occasions, stows them in his backpack. Everything is checked. The employees' backpacks and belongings is checked coming in and out of the Demona. So the, he, you know, he really ended up alerting them to their lack of security because one night a supervisor leaves the keys to all these restricted areas um, in, in the shower room. And because Zanuna was a good worker and everybody was used to him and he was quiet, you know, nobody suspected him and he lifted the keys and he spent a couple of harrowing hours photographing all these, uh, like two rolls of film um, of the Demona. He sneaks and put, he puts the... Uh, He's back, he sneaks out his camera and film on separate occasions again, and he doesn't quit the Demona until they start uh, laying people off and then they were going to transfer him and he decides now's the time to go. He leaves and he travels around Europe for like 10 months with the undeveloped film, ends up in Sydney, Australia, wanders into a social justice Anglican um, church, hits it off with uh, Father Dave, um, who also, he would be a good guest for you to interview. Uh, he's in Australia. And anyway, one thing leads to another. Venunu um, starts sharing, you know, his story about the Demona. Father Dave thinks he's, you know, off his nut, you know, because, I mean, there was no reason to believe any of this. There's no proof because Venunu still had not... Um, and, and Israel was denying it. Israel was no, saying, exactly. we don't have nuclear well, weapons, we don't have a nuclear this is program, and the United States was protecting them. Yeah, oh, right? definitely. Israel could not get away with their nuclear deceptions or occupation of Palestine without USA. Right. Exactly. Uh, protection in our tax dollars. So um, he's, with yeah, this, definitely. he's with this Anglican uh, Christian leader in, you said, Australia? Uh, well, he's, he's Father Dave, uh, fighting right. Father David Smith. I'll, I'll connect you. I'll, I'll connect you guys after the That's show. Right. Yeah, go um, ahead and tell us the story. Yeah, but anyway, uh, Venunu ends up telling his story, and uh, one thing leads to another. He connects with Peter Hoonam from London Sunday Times, and uh, Peter comes uh, to um, Sydney, Australia, interviews Venunu. They d together develop the pictures. Then Venunu leaves with um, Peter to London. They hire uh, Frank Barnaby, a nuclear physicist, to vet the new story. He interviews the new for like three days, but they had the new hold up in like a little hotel room for I don't know how many weeks, whatever it was. He gets antsy. He starts wandering around. He meets who he thinks is an American beautician uh -huh. on holiday. Yeah, she's an American traveling with her sister-in-law's passport, and she is a Mossad uh, operative. Right. So here she traps the Nunu, and he said, he said to me, you know, then there's this big thing, oh, it was a honeypot, it was all about, like, sex, but they both had their own rooms in, in um, London. They well, I mean, that's the reason they point. left. The, because that's besides the point. The point is, though, that... The Mossad tracks him down. Absolutely. He's Kidnapped talking him. to the London newspaper, right? Yeah, well, uh, what happens told. is the, uh, uh, the U.K. didn't want to get involved, so they had to get him um, over to um, Rome. They had to get him because uh, Thatcher didn't want anything to do with it. They, you know, they, the, the governments knew. They, the Israel knew. America knew. They knew what was going on. But they... Uh, a, f a few of the pictures had gotten into the hands of a tabloid, like, you know, our whatever it is, National Enquirer, whatever if that's still around, you know, a tabloid, and they and they print a very um, bad uh, story about Benunu. They never interview him, but they put his 
picture in the paper and a few of the photos. Anyway, he panics. He tells Cindy, Cheryl, uh, hey, you know, now with the massage after me, she says, oh, well, I've got a sister in Rome. She gets the tickets. They fly to Rome. The second he's in the hotel room, they hit him on the head. They drug him. They fling him on a, um, a, a ship, a cargo ship or a small yacht. They transport him back to Israel for a closed-door trial. They keep him totally away from the media. They put him in solitary confinement for 11 and a half of his 18 years. And then they free him April 21, 2004, under these draconian restrictions. You can't talk to foreigners. You can't have a cell phone. You can't have an Internet connection. He's got... Uh, uh, you know, he's got all that. He's got a, a website. He's got a YouTube channel. He's on Facebook. It's insane. And I show up in June of 2005, and he'd already been out for a year. They were already bringing charges against him. They were going to have this freedom of speech trial um, because he dared to speak to foreigners when he got out of jail after 18 years. And number one in America, only one really, was Amy Goodman, but that's a whole other story I write about. Right. Um, Listen, but uh, anyway, hang on, uh, when Benuda Arlene, tells me... Arlene, you got to hang on. i got to uh, break now. It's a quarter it's okay. to the top of the hour. Okay. So, Eileen, you I'll just hang on a second. We're talking with Eileen Fleming, who uh, has this story uh, that a lot of people, believe it or not, have not heard of. Or if they've heard of, they don't understand it. This uh, guy, an Israeli Jew from Morocco, who broke the uh, secret about Israel's nuclear weapons, um, and the Israeli Mossad kidnapped him and uh, brought him to Israel and put him in jail for 18 years. He lived, as Eileen points out, in solitary confinement for 11 of those 18 years. And when they release him, they put, as she said, draconian restrictions on him, which I'm, we're going to follow up on where he is today and what's happened since then, because it hasn't been a good story, and Israel deserves to be criticized for the way they're treating Mordecai Venunu, who, by the way, converted to Christianity. And if you're a Christian and you don't sit there and think that that's wrong, then you're not really a Christian. I'm Ray Hanania. This is the Arab Daily News Radio Show. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back and talk with Eileen Fleming right after these messages. أنظم الواقع على 24065 أرشد لك في مدينة فاركستون هاوس ترحب بالجالية العربية والكلدانية تنزلات كبيرة على عموم المواد الغذائية في يوم الأربعاء من كل أسبوع لا تنسوا فرش كاري أوت جميع أنواع المعجنات وأيضا صواني الكنب المشكلة والصمون الحار لحوم حلال الجالية العربية والإسلامية الملحمة في إدارة قصاب الجالية المعروف سلوان جربوع زروهم على 24065 أرشد لك في مدينة فارمكتون هاوس أو اتصلوا بهم على 248-476-0300 أسوق زمزم للمداقع عنوان لجميع طلباتكم اتصلوا على 248-476-0300 أسوق زمزم للمعاملة الراقية وكرم الضيافة عنوان كم سافر وحدك ترافل للسياحة والسفر بإدارة نبيل الباشا تعلن عن افتتاح مكتبها الواقع على 28695 راين رود في مدينة وورن خدمات متميزة وخبرة تفوق العشرون عاما نضعها في خدمة عملائنا الكرام مع أمتي ترافل يمكنكم حجز رحلاتكم الجوية داخل أمريكا الوطن العربي وأنحاء العالم إضافة إلى الأماكن السياحية والاستجمام للحصول على أفضل العروض وأنسب الأسعار ولمزيد من المعلومات اتصلوا على الرقم 586-578-9126 586-578-9126 أمتي ترافل عنوان للصداقة والثقة قشات ميديترينيان ماركت بإدارة سهر قشات وأولاده يرحبون بالجالية العربية والكيدانية جميع أنواع المواد الغذائية البان طازجة الكرازات والبهارات الطازجة داخل الأسواق مطعم ميديترينيان شيش كذاب يقدم يوميا جميع أنواع الكذاب المقبلات العربية العراقية وثواني الكامبو المميزة تفتح الأسواق 
من الثامنة إلى التاسعة مساء من الاثنين وحتى السبت ومن الثامنة صباحا إلى التاسعة مساء يوم الأحد تقع الأسواق على 3289 نورث وسترن هايوي في مدينة فارمينغتون هيلز لحوم حلال للجالية الإسلامية لطلباتكم من المطعم كول 2485387855 ذات 2485387855 قشرة ميديتريميان ماركت خدمة متميزة ومعاملة راقية Welcome back to the Arab Daily News Radio Show. I'm Ray Hanania, and it is uh, December 11th. I'm here every second Friday of the month broadcasting live in Detroit on WNZK AM 690 radio in uh, Detroit and AM 700 radio in Washington, D.C. Uh, we also uh, have a live uh, broadcast through WNZK. You can get that link by visiting our website at thearabdailynews.com. And if you miss the show, we always have a podcast of every show, and you can get that off of iTunes, or you can also get it off of the Arab Daily News dot com website where our guest Eileen Fleming is a writer and one of her topics and she writes about many things but one of her topics is the most fascinating topic and it's been it's so complicated because nobody has looked at it in over 30 years with the intensity that Eileen does uh, Mordecai Venunu is a Moroccan Jew he immigrates to Israel he settles here with his family He gets a job at what he thinks is some kind of, I don't know, shop. Uh, turns out to be a nuclear factory where they're building nuclear weapons in Demona. And uh, after working there for a number of years, he leaves with pictures that he takes. And word gets out, and the Mossad sends its agents to where he's now at, I guess, in Sydney, Australia. And they, kit or, and they bring him to... Uh, Europe, and then they kidnap him there, and then they bring him to Israel. They convict him and charge him in a secret trial and sentence him to, eight, to who knows how many years in prison. He spends 18 years in prison, including 11 and a half years in solitary confinement. Let that sink in, folks. That's horrible. And then he gets out after 18 Uh, years and Eileen, I think that was in about 2005. You said um, in 2004 and 2004, and, right? And then uh, what they did and there's I've got video of the new news. He talks about state right. by solitary confinement. People can get that on YouTube. 30 minutes with the new news. You know, let's, um, let's stop for one only, second and and let's talk about you before we continue the story. If people want to find out about this and the other things you're writing. I know they can go to the AirDailyNews.com, but what's your web page, Eileen, where um, they, they can, can go to get I all the information? Dot org, and they can find all the different things on, because I, I do a lot of other things, not just this, uh, right. you know, but yeah, EileenFleming.org, and then they can find anything they want from there. EileenFleming.org. Yes. I urge everybody to go there and check it out. We only have a couple minutes, but you end up meeting Mordecai. Yeah, you do. And, and you help tell the story. Not only been back in solitary for the 11 and a half out of that first 18 years, then I followed his freedom of speech trial uh, because that was fascinating. Here we've got uh, the only democracy in the world uh, putting this guy on uh, you know, charges because he dared to speak to foreigners uh, who were media in 2004. Um, nobody, uh, the, the media, of course, ignored it because that's Israel. We don't talk about Israel's nukes here in America. And then they put him back in prison, yeah, right? They put him back for 78 days in solitary in a very maximum high security uh, prison in, in uh, the summer of 2010, which was the outcome of his freedom of speech trial. And even to this day, this guy is still waiting his eighth petition to the high courts, Israel Supreme Court, to end his human rights um, restrictions is under uh, review at this time. He's supposed to hear by or before January 24. Is he in um, prison very, now, or is he in detention? What's no, his no, no, status? No, 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 no. He, he's walking around, but it's very important here that in September 24, 2015, after being adamant that he wasn't going to talk to Israeli press, because the new has always maintained 
that Israel is not a democracy unless you are a Jew, which is a very true statement, right. okay. ethnocracy. But, you know, he, he, he cut off his nose to spite his face here by not talking to him, but he finally realizes after all this time he's got to appeal to the Israeli public. And what, he's what, what, what is his about status, though? Is he Hebrew. free or is so, he, can he go any place he wants? In Israel. Yes, in Israel. Right. He can go to Tel Aviv. But he can't leave Israel? Israel? He just cannot go to the little town of Bethlehem. He can't go to the occupied state of uh, can Palestine. Can he leave Israel and come to the United States? Pardon? Can he leave Israel and come to the United no, States? No, 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 no. He can't, he can't get a passport. So he, he can't go to the airport. But his wife, he got married in May. She's right. a Norwegian professor of biblical ancient ancient Bible studies so he's, in Norway. He's he had uh, so an all the... Hey, Eileen, Eileen. Asylum, but it's very important here, in September of 2015, a couple of months ago, he finally relents, he goes on Israeli TV, he speaks only in Hebrew, and he says, he appeals to the uh, Israeli public, I got married three months ago, I can't get a job here, she is the breadwinner, I want to leave my life, start my life anew, I'm finished with the entire nuclear story, and I've said this hundreds of times, I have no more secrets. I want them to let me leave and right. go live abroad with my wife, and that's the end of the story. Yeah, for Venuna, that's the end of the story, but his story is all over the world wide web. Venuna doesn't right. have to say another word. We are, USA is so colluded in Israel's nuclear deceptions. They're a big thing. It, in the UN, all these nations, I don't know, 170 something, are voted no. They want that voted for a nuclear ban. Who guess who guess who doesn't want to abolish nuclear weapons? America, Israel, Germany, France. I mean, the, the, all the ones that have been included in Israel's nuclear program are the ones who are fighting the rest of the world who want to ban these uh, uh, these um, instruments from hell. I mean, all right, uh, Eileen. Yes. Listen, we're at the end of our show, but last question. Yes. He, Israel restricts him, in other words, then, correct? Totally. He can't but, leave but Israel. He can only 24, stay in Israel proper. He, he is it Israel know. or is it just Jerusalem or what's he, his he restriction? He can go anywhere to, in Israel, he, but he just can't get to go to the airport. He can go to, but he can go to Tel Aviv. He lived in Tel Aviv for like a year. And, and his story is out, right? Why do they keep picking at him, though? They're just torturing him. It's out. just torture, and they want to show uh, the uh, Israeli public, this is what you do when, when you speak up against so you know, they're using him to, they're using him to discourage other Israelis from yes. doing the same thing. Yes, you yes, think? yes, okay. yes, yes. You, you, All right, you don't we're at the end of our life. show, unfortunately, yeah. and I'll tell you, Eileen Fleming is worth five hours. Okay, it, she does. She deserves more than thirty minutes. She's worth five hours, but she's a great writer, and you can go to EileenFleming.org. Thank you. Or you can go to the ArabDailyNews.com. You can read her stuff at both websites. You can connect with her. She has a number of books. Uh, Mordecai Venunu is a great story. It's only one of the stories that she covers. She covers so much. And I want to thank you, Eileen, for joining us uh, this morning in Detroit and Washington, D.C., to tell us about this really tragic story about Mordecai Venunu. Thank you, well, Eileen. You know, you know, put positive vibes out there that Israel's going to relent and just let this guy go and be with us. He's 61 years old. You know, yeah. he's got nothing yeah. new to say and been yeah. there 30 years. But the world, it's, this is an international intervention. The world needs to put the pressure on Israel. The Iran deal is going to fall apart unless Israel opens up at Demona. All right, Eileen Fleming, thank you so thank much you. for joining us, Eileen. We thank will you. talk to you later. Thank you. All right, that was Eileen Fleming, and, and it really is, it's one of these tragic stories, and I really should get into it more to talk about it, because uh, Americans just don't get it. This guy is, he converted to Christianity, he's a Christian. One of the reasons they hate him so much in Israel is because he converted to Christianity. They hate the guy, and they've imprisoned him uh, for 18 years, and now they've restricted him. He's under kind of basically a, a house arrest. He can't leave the country. Um, he's stuck there. Anyway, I want to thank you all for listening to us this morning at the Arab Daily News Radio Show. And I hope you uh, will follow us again. I'm here the second Friday of every month broadcasting live in Detroit and Washington, D.C. I want to thank Mike, our producer, uh, who's been managing the phone and the shows and all the commercials. He did a great job. And I want to thank all of you again, listeners, for tuning in to our program. And I urge you, please go to the ArabDailyNews.com. Uh, that's my base.
for everything that I do, writing about American topics. I'm writing for Al Jazeera English now, uh, feature stories. I'm writing for Creator Syndicate. I'm writing for the Southwest News newspaper group of six newspapers in the Chicago area. Um, and you can catch all that writing just by starting out at the ArabDailyNews.com. Thank you so much, everybody, do it. Thank you, uh, Ramsey, uh, for joining us. Um, and thank you, uh, Eileen Fleming, for joining us, too. Both great people. Check out their websites, and we'll talk to you again next month, second Friday of January. Have a great holiday, everybody. Bye-bye.